Daniel's here. Correctivity for homeostasis and thereby autonomy and sovereignty for European peoples, genus and species, a concept of genetic unionization, structuring social accountability and correctivity for human and pervasive ecology, coordination thereof. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I made the mistake of falling off my keto diet last night and having some pizza, which would have gluten in it, which I've uh, developed a uh, an allergy to over the years, and it affects my my breathing. So if you if you hear my my me wheezing a bit, that's the way it affects me. It's either that or. Uh, the very kosher in origin Monsanto company and it's, uh, it's Roundup weed killer or Franken wheat, dwarf wheat, <clears throat> which is also supposed to be quite unnatural and, un and unhealthy. <clears throat> but, uh, I'm fairly okay, just if, if you hear me a bit short of breath. <laughs> that's that's the reason. It shouldn't have fallen off my keto diet. <clears throat> okay. So anyway. Um, I've put up some of my older streams that I've taken down from YouTube onto BitChute. And finally, I've started to, to put things on Odyssey. I haven't gotten any following there yet. I don't know what that's about. I have three or four videos up there already. <clears throat> um, and I've never had a massive following, but not, <laughs> not, not zero. Just people are, are, uh, watching a little bit on BitChute so far. And of course, <clears throat> I had, while my comments had been closed there, I've left a few open, and the only comment that I got was, of course, negative. That's why I don't bother with comments. People are, it's like, it's like guest worker writ large. People are just looking for negative things to say. Like I tried to say that, oh, you're, you're, you need structuring. Well, no, that was a stream of consciousness that, pretty much stream that they're commenting on. It wasn't <clears throat> particularly one wasn't meant to uh, show structuring. And then <clears throat> the subsequent stream uh, does develop the concept of structuring as I do uh, with unionization, but also it shows how the very concept is impacted by uh, the YKW deliberately. And it's a really good stream. <clears throat> the second Tiffany stream that's up there. Um, and if anybody doesn't like it, well, I, I, I'm satisfied that you're an idiot. <clears throat> um, So, like I said, I when my internet went down a, a few days ago, I was forced to. Well, I took I took occasion to listen to some of my old work, and I found that that I I found it more satisfying than the other stuff around, whether it's at uh, Imperium Press or well, certainly at this, the crap at Majority Rights or. Um, Certainly, just anywhere else. Um, so it's it's there now. It's it's no no longer. I, I had to. I felt the need to take some of it down from YouTube. And speaking of that, <clears throat> because I, I've sent out invitation invitations. I've got to be. Uh, 
make the uh, ground rules here clear because while I have, I think, a reasonable sense of what is okay to say and not to say <clears throat> according to YouTube rules. Um, I do walk close to the third rail, certainly. Um, and, but I, I feel like I, um, my platform is in a position where I can manage that better than others. And, and I have a, a, a decent sense of it. <clears throat> um, and when I so when I introduce other guests, um, I increase the risk of their uh, crossing the line, not not maybe saying things that are going to trigger the censor. So, <clears throat> um. So I have to be careful. Um, anyway, the, in the it's in, one interesting um, coincidence that I found in putting up the second Tiffany stream from last winter. <clears throat> I found that I was talking about this um, Sewell guy, the Australian Nazi, in one of those, and. and noted that he was welcome to talk by uh, Brittany over there at uh, Politically Provoked. <clears throat> She's this very waspy looking kosher lady. Or it's half, 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 uh, half kosher. And I'd say <clears throat> for a reason worth noting, again, note that our enemies would want to want the association of WN and Nazism, uh, which this platform breaks, uh, obviously for good reason, our en as our enemies at Politically Provoked only make clear by wanting to maintain that association. And of course, pretending to be on our side, pretending to be in opposition to political correctness. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, It's not coincidence that they wouldn't talk to me, even though they said they might, but they will talk to a Nazi. They, again, they want to maintain that association. It's good for them. Makes us look bad, divide and conquer, so on. That's why this platform is so important and why our enemies <clears throat> try to bury this platform because <clears throat> that's one of the mistakes we're not going to make <clears throat> we're also not going to make the mistake of christianity here and this is one um it's a subtle point that i wanted to make because i thought that it was getting a bit on thin ice um when someone might talk about scriptural interpretations somehow uh just you know insinuating that it, it somehow justified uh, what the nazis they're they're uh responding to it in kind let's say um <clears throat> And that's something where um, I could I could understand <laughs> I could even understand uh, the kosher folks being alarmed by that, um, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that point in a second. <clears throat> um, Okay, so I've sent out some invitations and I've got 
to be a bit careful here about the ground rules given our general rubric, which is a forbidden topic, namely that European peoples should not have to die and be exploited. <clears throat> not being more cute than that, there are causes to this which, if they are to be addressed, have to be indirect enough and, of course, you know, with enough uh, nuance and have to leave off errant theories as to the proposed remedy. This pl platform is against Nazism and Hitler. <clears throat> it is not about uh, redemptionism of that stuff whatsoever. Um, it does not approve of Holocaust denial. We are about autonomy, and that corresponds with being anti-supremacy. We do not seek to exploit others. Naturally, we do not uh, see violence as a means to our autonomy. It's something that can only uh, uh, hinder our, pro our progress, uh, let alone uh, genocide. <clears throat> this platform is critical of and does not partake <clears throat> of any of the Abrahamic religions. And while I'm addressing that point, and it is true that I walk close to the third rail myself in recognizing the kosher folks as a people distinct from European peoples with different typically conflicting interests, my going there is one factor enough. I am concerned in adding other voices to the conversation that I'm that I run greater risk of <clears throat> running afoul of of the the stream running afoul of YouTube's rules. I would like to keep the channel um, as long as possible. Um, and I should be able to, because it's on solid moral grounds. <clears throat> and while some of the rules are, in my opinion, unfair, unjust, other rules I can kind of understand, even though it can raise hackles among right-wingers. For example, as a minority who've already <clears throat> experienced what can happen, I can understand why they would want to, why they would not want to allow, quote, free speech of Holocaust style or talking about killing them in mass. If certain ways of talking are not blocked, I can understand how it can unhinge mass action that is neither entirely accurate nor amenable to corrections for the, ma the mass logical force set forth. <laughs> For example, when scripture is cited as uncorrectable proof, you know, beyond, you know, verification and, and correction, that genocidal action is correct or else it is us who will get it. I can understand that kind of argument causing alarm. <clears throat> because if rabbis are interpreting scripture in, a, in an egregious way, then challenge the interpretation. Don't embark upon a mere... It, image action against that, the interpretation that's the proper response okay so one thing now is here and i don't want to make it worse nor do i want to be uh, cowardly i don't think um the author who lana loktov presented in having translated uh Kudinov kalergi's uh text where he expresses hope for chaining Europeans into a mixed race people should be out of bounds for discussion. Uh, we should be able to defend ourselves as a species. Uh, that's what species naturally do. They seek to maintain and, and further themselves to, to uh, replicate their genetics. That's entirely natural. <clears throat> and also in contrast to his large public failure at the BB show question time, Nick Griffin did fairly well in his statement to the European Parliament about Kalergi. I'm not going to play that video, but if you want to see fairly good rhetoric <clears throat> against the Kalergi idea and how, which is obviously expressing itself through myriad voices. Nick, Nick uh, Griffin did <clears throat> acquit himself in that instance fairly well. 
in the European Parliament. Look it up. Clergy kissed kissed kosher ass all the while. He was, I think, mixed Japanese and Austrian or something like this. Uh, say he was saying only kosher folks were fit to lead, while the rest of your Europeans should be mongrelized with blacks and Asians. <clears throat> And while I wag my finger, quite rightly so, with those who flirt with Nazis and so-called revisionists, <clears throat> I myself can walk close to the third rail as I am eager to cite sources of imperialism and genocide, um, including among uh, their folk. I've seen a video recently which called myself called my attention to something that i found interesting which was that uh christopher columbus has been railed against by anti-white activists for decades now as the white bringer of imperialism and supremacist genocide to the new world um, a recent documentary makes a compelling case that columbus had a jewish mother and a portuguese noble father it wasn't italian at all <clears throat> that he was very sympathetic to his Jewish heritage, that at least part of his motivations, motivation for pursuing the passage to India was to find a place for Jewish diaspora, those who were subject to Isabella's edict in the Inquisition at that point, that uh, the co uh, Jews must convert to Christianity, leave or die. And while Columbus <clears throat> set across uh, and gallows upon landing in the Caribbean. He apparently unleashed a genocidal scourge against the natives, killing resistors to servitude and forcing others, other natives to intermarry with blacks to be more compliant and better serving slaves. That's a, that's a horrible thing. <clears throat> I was never, I, I was never one, I never got why Columbus was celebrated anyway what did he discover there were people already there how do you discover <laughs> the new world um but uh anyway apparently unleashed was a genocidal scourge against the natives killing resistors to serve to servitude and forcing others to other natives to intermarry with blacks to be more compliant and better serving slaves, such that in some islands there were no pure natives left. Now, this corresponds with two uh, theories, um, pejorative theories of, uh, well, one being Abrahamism as superior, as imperialism, um, that uh, Christianity is a, forms a kind of, that uh, Christianity and Islam form well at times both I suppose swords and shields of imperialism of Abrahamic imperialism uh, justifying even even genocide uh, in the name of you know bringing uh, the, Abraham, <laughs> the Abrahamic God to the to the um, primitive masses, and in that case, the the uh, natives, native Caribs, and and uh, people of Mexico and South America, and so on. Desoto, it's another one. Anyway, so Abrahamic imperialism is implicit in the story of Columbus, but also interestingly is the theory of horizontal transmission which <clears throat> when instigated you know, forcing the uh, kosher folks across borders as in the case of columbus um it increases virulence because they're no longer uh developing and adapting to uh vertically from the ground and local, and local situation. Um, 
with persecutions, the Spanish Inquisition being one of the no, being one notable example, along with the Holocaust and uh, the, po the other pogroms, <clears throat> uh, killing the more uh, vertical kinds, the uh, the ones who are uh, more accountable, more intermarried even with uh, the natives and selecting for the more virulent horizontally transmitting kinds. Okay, so <laughs> the third, where, third rail walked closely to enough. Um, oh gosh. I invite people in who's here, but uh, Claire Call, and I don't know what You know, Claire, give it up. I find it interesting that, that Zedez said that this, she's this kind of um, lady who circulates. She's a, a woman who lives in, in Quebec. I think she's half French and half Irish, and she lives in Quebec, and she circulates around right-wing circles, and she... I invited her on to talk because she she's interested in she's mainly interested in, in uh, the gender conflict <clears throat> and I have I have certain means of understanding and talking about that that are worthwhile. She tries to pretend that I don't, and um, I invited her on, and she said. I can't. I can't take you serious. I, I can't take you seriously. I can't take anybody who talks to Claire Call seriously. But anybody out there, categorical imperative is is uh, Claire Call. Don't. I don't recommend taking what she says seriously. She just tries to to promote herself, and and really, it's terrible. She should mind her own business. Uh, I mean, I look. I listen back to some of the podcasts that I that I, I made and. Now this woman has the na the the nerve to try to to cut me down with a uh, ad hominem attacks about uh, about me and uh, uh, saying I'm not doing this that and the other thing. She's not Claire. Forget it. <clears throat> um. Okay, so. Uh, Invitations have been sent, and I have a little over an hour more to expend uh, on my StreamYard time, and it will, uh, and I'll still have enough time left so that I can do a good long podcast next weekend, and then I won't be too far from uh, the reinstantiation of 20 hours by StreamYard on July 22nd. Look, look, look what Claire Call's doing. She's she's speaking to her uh, about herself in the third person. She says, Claire Call is a white advocate concerned about white people whom their governments don't care. No, Claire Call is not a, a white. Claire Call is a Chinese person who won't mind her own business and has the the temerity to try to uh, impose her, impose an entire moral or, or an alien moral order, another one on Europeans, and to say that uh, we shouldn't be critical of the kosher folk and all this, just all this stupid shit. Um, no. Uh, <clears throat> non-white people can care about white people but they should not try to they should uh, not try to take over the cause and render 
stupid criticisms from a very uninformed position, which Clerk Hall does. Uh, she really, Claire Call really should uh, mind her own business, in a word. It's not this, and her judgment is very poor. Her criticisms of, of me, very, very, very stupid. I wouldn't say she's crazy, which which Norvin Hobbs tried to say. Well, I shouldn't. I mean, not mean to curse. Says Norvin, he's a friend. I did. I, but I don't think that crazy is the word for her. Clark Hall. Just, just, uh, just agenda driven, and whether the the reason to be suspicious for that that clearly misdirecting agenda comes from her own errant personality or she's got uh, orders from from somebody conditional orders I, I don't know okay let me I'll, I'll put the uh, I'm not clear I'm not talking to you but I will put the link if somebody else wants to come on yeah Okay. So, like I said, I um, I put I'm, I've taken to putting some of the uh, old streams back up, and they're that I'd taken down from YouTube, and they're holding up quite well. I'm I was really surprised. Um, I uh, I put the one in parody of uh, Millennial Woo's Millennial Yule up there. I put one <clears throat> in which I talked with Carol, the English lady. And that one, uh, for some for some reason, it's still processing at BitChute. BitChute is weird. It, it might be one of those that just gets stuck in the processing mode. I have to upload it again. Anyway, it, it worked at Odyssey. Odyssey does work more reliably, as I've heard and now experienced. Um, and... Uh, and then to put up the, the first... Tiffany stream, which that I, I haven't listened to. Frankly, I haven't listened to it all. And it might be the one where I am reading some of my arguments at majority rights, which I found was kind of a mistake because in my <clears throat> commentary there, I'm prone to use profanity and vitriol, um, which... I'm satisfied is justified in, in relation to guest worker for his um, dishonesty, his gaslighting, his uh, straw manning, his just anything resist. I mean, that's why I say this this comment on bit shoot that I that uh, my stream needs structuring. It's so it's so guest worker writ large. Um, if you do something well, that's exactly what he's going to say you're doing badly. Anyway, so um, while while profanity and, and uh, vitriol can be okay in the comments there in context of majority rights, reading it aloud and, and having people come to that for the first time probably doesn't sound, <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't sound good. So it, but by the second uh, Tiffany stream, which I put up afterwards, I, I corrected that. It's, it's, uh, that's a really good stream. It's the, it's the last one that's up either on Odyssey or BitChute. I can, I can recommend that to anybody who wants a sense of what's going on. <clears throat> 
Um, and I'll be, I'll be putting up more of the streams that have taken down in days to come. Uh, okay. Claire Court does not know everyone. Claire Court says she knows everyone in Nashville. Claire Court does not know everyone in Nashville. You'd never even heard of Sam Francis. You didn't know who uh, Burnham was. You're, you don't know the relative importance of uh, some things to white men. You try to turn everything into a gender issue and, 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 and steer it towards your stupid secular coronism. No, Claire. Uh, you... you try to promote yourself way, way, way beyond uh, your merit. As I've said to you many times, and you, I'm satisfied now that you will never hear, <clears throat> if you're just satisfied to be a contributor of, you know, to observing some of the problems <clears throat> with gender and, you know, of course, uh, uh, immigration, uh, that would be okay, but you want to be a theoretician and you're simply not qualified, neither academically nor um, in terms of having an experiential and organic sense of what our people need, whereas I do. Why do you speak, Claire, why are you speaking to yourself in the third person? You told Claire Cora about San Francisco, and now she knows. This is, this is how you snuck onto a few, some people, Nor, I talked to Norvin uh, Hobbs the other day, and he, he asked me what, I don't know how you uh, can stand talking to Claire Cora. <clears throat> and I told him, well, you know, one of the reasons is that she has, managed to trick me a few times by using different avatars and I don't, I'm not sure that it's her right away. And <clears throat> she has been a useful foil. Um, sometimes, sometimes, uh, because she before she tries to start with her bullshit and her and her uh stupid contentions the w one that really pissed me off recently she always pisses me off one of the things that she said that really pissed me off uh, was I was, I was talking about you know the <clears throat> how the the hippie epic faded almost overnight overnight with uh, the end of the Vietnam war and draft uh and she said she had she said how is that relevant it's like uh, you know how could it be more relevant it's it's it was the stupidest comment and she says that that her opinion is you know uh, i was being toward death relevant oh whitman oh claire and then she said and then another show she said Oh, uh, Poles have a pathological hatred of Russians. Oh, my God. I've never met one. Who, one Polish person who could be characterized in that way remotely. You had some who were, who were definitely traumatized from the Soviet Union, and they, they hate communism in, in the Soviet Union, but even even these people... They might not like the Russian language, but it never heard one expressing hatred, let alone pathological hatred for Russians. And that this is the kind of thing that, that she will say. Or Hitler just wanted his place in the sun. Or, oh, Putin is just doing what he has to do. She doesn't, Claire doesn't, you know, she's not moved by the fact that 50 million Europeans or were killed by this nonsense. This doesn't move her. She wants to say, oh, this is just like, you know, a fact of 
the life of the powerful. And she's still blathering on. I don't know what she's saying. I don't want, I don't, you know, Claire, whoever you are, you know, take Claire's comment with more than a grain of salt, a pound of salt. It's just, women's birth. Look, listen to the crap she's saying. Forget it. She's a misdirect, misdirection agent, whether for it really, she's ugh. I'm not too worried because any any honest person who listens to my stream, listens to what I say, and even if we'll see, even if I talk to her, have talked to her, it's not like uh, I'm endorsing her view. Uh, and uh, <laughs> trying to promote it desperately, though she might. Then you know it. She, it's not entirely easy. I mean, she does have a sympathetic voice, and she she can be a hard worker. I mean, she uh, took the time, for example, to uh, timestamp some of my videos which was you know maybe nice or maybe she was uh i don't maybe uh whatever I, but uh thanks but no thanks claire you, you've uh you've shown yourself to just way overstep your bounds it's understatement too many times. Though I wouldn't I wouldn't mind talking to Tiffany again. I wouldn't mind talking to uh, Amanda again. Um, I'm not sure it would be productive to talk to Diana. She pretty much seems set in a civic nationalist mode and uh for some reason th the german lady she, she works at the immigration office seems to think that that's uh deep thinking that if a uh, a german couple adopts a nigerian baby that that nigerian baby becomes german uh no not not, not in any uh deep sense <clears throat> although she couldn't help but be concerned about her things and mentioned how her English husband was concerned about what's going on uh so don't wanna certainly don't wanna write off her opinion entirely. It might be a bit early for Mirth Baron, particularly on a Sunday after people are out maybe out having fun on a Saturday, so I invited Mirth Baron. I don't know if he's gonna be able to make it. Certainly invited Snork, um and Snork is, by his own uh, discussion, coming to these these issues only pretty recently uh, from a liberal position. Um, and like a lot of people, uh, it's coming through right-wing auspices. So that means, you know, uh, learning some things through the people, the quote, national socialists like Seoul over in uh, Austria. And again, one of the one of the interesting things about the the last Tiffany stream that I put up is that I'm I'm discussing uh, because then it was fr the the problem with Sewell and his adherence to natural fallacy, and I see uh, Snork going that way a bit, and this is a problem with uh, you know coming up through 
uh, right-wing auspices that because the, these people have only been, have been more compelled. You know, people have uh, probably of Germanic extraction of German heritage to alleviate, alleviate themselves of uh, guilt trips have been probably more compelled to make a study of the kosher question. So in, in many respects can be sort of the ahead of the curve in terms of critical, some critical analysis. And, you, and to, so people learn from them. They don't know that they might not realize right away that it's not necessary. It's not necessary um, uh, for critical thinking. And it's not uh, about including about the kosher folks. And it's not uh, matter of fact, it's an absolute hindrance. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, in talking with with Per, um, was also uh, of Swedish background. It was a long history now of being uh, aware of the antics of the of the kosher folks and the influence of the power and influence of them and also uh basically of concern for european interests native european interests particularly his swedish uh for years now um he like me likes snorkel blog and told me you know, don't uh don't fight with him that, that will uh he's a good guy and we will be able to talk um go about the talk sense to him talk him into sense um <clears throat> and so i will be talking to per per um Norden from Sweden. Uh, he had. He was gonna. He was gonna talk to us uh, during the week, but he was at uh, a wedding party, his brother's wedding, over the weekend. Contracted the coronavirus, unbeknownst to him, fainted and fell down and hit his head on hard floor. I had to go to the hospital. Where they, that's where they. Diagnosed him and his and his uh, small child son, so he's recovering from that. But he he'll be talking to us, <clears throat> along with uh, Mirth, and, and hopefully I haven't alienated uh, snorkel blog. I don't I don't I shouldn't have. Um, some people might think that it that it's overkill, but it's really important because. Uh, <clears throat> it's really important that there be a, a platform that clearly rejects Nazism, Hitler, that, that clearly rejects uh, um, Christianity and, and all Abrahamic religions for, because most people don't believe it and a lot of people just don't want it and are even offended by how obsequious and self-destructive that this religion has made our people of necessary consequence of its texts um, and of course along with that that uh, that we recognize <clears throat> the kosher folks as another people that they're not uh, the same as other Europeans that they are another people a distinct people with different and typically conflicting interests with us um and so it's important to recognize them as not a part of our group uh not a part of our advocacy group um and to maintain a vigilance there along with well one of the big distinctions of this platform is that we we uh as right wingers and liberals of our own as the source of traitorous motivation um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
Uh, so maybe next weekend we'll have a big marathon. And here we'll have several people here. <clears throat> Welcome. Norvin, I sent in a, 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 an invitation to Norvin Hobbs, too. And he said he'd be around. Uh, <laughs> maybe I insulted him by, by uh, speaking so well. You know, some of some of these streams that I just put back up were at a time where I was particularly miffed with some of the um, the Nazi people that he associates with. And well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Is what I mean to say. So I'm just not. I mean, if people can't see fit to get past that and can't see. You can't see the obvious fact of this not being something that is going to work to uh, coordinate European peoples and, and, and defense, then I don't want to bother with you. Um, you can have a lot of clever ideas. It can be fairly intelligent, but that's that's just, I mean, really... It's stupid, and it's bad. Who's Isabella? Hi, Isabella. Who are you? Hi. Oh, it's 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 Claire. Claire, this is how you sneak on, huh? I I thought we could talk about um the assassination of Shinzo Abe. Is this something you have an interest in, or or don't you care? No, I do care, and um, you know, I but I. You know, um, whatever I, <laughs> I did. You hear that? I don't particularly want to talk with you, Claire, because you're always trying to impose your agenda here. I and promise not to talk about my agenda. We can talk about your stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Shinzo Abbey. Yeah, I, I. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not very well worst, versed in Japanese politics, of course, but what I knew about him, I, um, I liked him. Um, I, I like, I like, and to begin with, I like his face. I think he has a, is a, a cool, funny face, I've got a, a likable face, but I also liked it, tend to like his politics. I, I liked it when he became indignant when the, um, one black U.S. soldier, uh, raped and killed a Japanese girl. Um, I like the fact that he try that he's trying to uh, turn Japan into a nation with more more um, uh, potent military capacity. Uh, I think that that's needed. Um, they were an ally of Taiwan. I uh, like the fact that uh, oh, that he's slowly and slyly angling to help Japan retake its northern islands. I hope they get Sakhalin. They, that is a much needed gas reserve um, as opposed to relying on nuclear, which is dangerous there in an earthquake zone. What, Russia should not have that that island. Um, I see them as as a, also a, um, a valuable ally, and, and, and perhaps Abby could have been a valuable ally against against uh, Russian imperialism and kleptocracy. Um, but then, he, then his successor is pretty much was pretty much mentored by Ab, Abby. I just, I just, I, I think it's uh, really sad, and um, I, I basically liked him. I don't, for what I know about him, I, I, I liked him. He was a, he was a nationalist and. Until recently, he'd done fairly well to keep immigration at bay. Um, I told that he, I'm told that he buckled on that a bit, but um, he he was he was a nationalist, and that's what's important. A faithful Japanese nationalist. So, what do you? I, think? I posted a Guardian article. I don't know if you'd like to read it <clears throat> about about Shinzo Abe in in the private chat. I don't know if you'd heard that about him. Hold on just a second. Yes, uh, Norvin. Um, oh, he, Norvin's here. Good. 
Hi, Norvin. Hello. No Fed posting. I'm not going to Fed post. Okay. Uh, Patrick's going to be over uh, in a second. Okay. Cool. It, we were just, uh, Isabella and I were just talking about uh, Shinzo Abe. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's actually become a real point of contention. I like him. I'm sympathetic. We're talking about the Japanese guy that was assassinated, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's how you pronounce his first name. Um, a striker and some of the people over at TRS are saying he was like a, he was a Japanese neocon. But when I read about him, he seems like he was a pretty good dude. I liked his policies, at least as far as not letting immigrants in and visiting the shrine for the dead from the war. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I don't like him keeping Japanese involvement in Afghanistan, but I mean, you know, pick your battle. Yeah, no, he, he, he wasn't perfect, but it seems like he was doing the best he could within his constraints. Um, basically a good guy. It's not, a, you know, something that I'm going to pay attention to every day, but yeah. Keeping, so yeah, immigration, keeping immigration at bay and, and, and maintaining a position as a, a valuable um, counterweight to Russian yeah. imperialism and kleptocracy. Pat is backstage is Google sentiment AI. Hi, Patrick. Hey, what's up? It's sentient, by the way. Sentient. Sorry. Yeah. I, <laughs> Google sentient. Of, yes, Google sentient AI. No Fed posting, Patrick. No, of course not. Why'd you have to How remind you that? Hey, no, oh, good, it's good to hear by from you again. Daniel, Daniel, did I Fed post last time, dude? No, you didn't. Exactly. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, go back and listen to it. Yeah, no, I don't think you did. No, I didn't. I I um I'm on my best behavior again. in this on your stream. You sound you, you sound like you're uh, chipper. Really, of course, of course, I always am. <laughs> no, you sometimes you're you're a bit cantankerous. Well, yes, because I have to deal with um, you know, I have to deal with how society is presently, a and of, also how a, a the, respond, of the uh the response that many uh you know ethno nationalists have towards this society. As well, the, the yeah. type of personalities I have to be entangled with. Oh yeah, that, it's it's a snake pit. Yeah, definitely. Well, Daniel, you don't do yourself no disrespect, man, but you don't do yourself favors when you sort of like alienate yourself as well. To be real, I'm not trying to like say, but you do kind of alienate yourself by going well, after I, I, more mainstream people. Um. I could be, yeah, but I'm not. It's not because I'm criticizing them uh, for who they are as people. It's that okay. the, when they're theoretically off the mark. Um, well, don't you think you're right? You're right that it could be. Hold on, let me just say, the, okay. you're right that it could be a bit more um, judicious Engaging. in my in, in judicious in my language. Like for example, I see that Red Ice has taken to saying that they'll they'll kind of give a pat on the back to Christians if they're basically otherwise doing the right thing. And then, and then add, because they're pagans, they'll say, um, folk over faith, or, uh, excuse me, folk over faith. And I thought that there was a really nice w diplomatic yeah. way of hand handling it as opposed to the way I am. It's like, Oh, this, this yeah, that's secret. what I mean. As, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean is that you, what I mean is that you have to couch not only your words, but you have to be a little bit more strategic when navigating in these circles. <laughs> no, let me let me tell you what. No, let me tell you why. No, I you're right. I'm, I'm laughing because you're you're, you're, you're okay. a bit right. Well, let there. me explain. Let me further explain why. I said ahead, this. Uh, initially, when I came in this, you know, I want to change things. I want to change society. And I mistakenly thought there was kind of a revolutionary milieu in like this uh, circle, and they they were kind of inviting much like the left was. And then I discovered most of these people are reactionaries. They're not revolutionaries. and They don't like some of the harsh language that I use, which I still will be unapologetic about many of my views. But the, the thing is, I had to be, I have to be a bit more diplomatic these days in that because there's a lot of gatekeepers now uh, that have sort of latched upon the lack of, let's say, uh, versatility, diversity in, in the right, or like whatever you want to call this, ethno-nationalist uh, on either sides. And there's really not a lane that you've carved out for yourself in whatever you're proposing. So many of the well, people I don't, I, I don't agree with I don't agree with that. 
Well, let me just further elaborate. What for many of the people that would be sympathetic to your views, uh, or at least give you a chance or a platform, I would say such as unfortunately the countercurrents people, people like Frody, Imperium Press, and the others. I've sort of heard you like talk about them, and they are very sensitive, is what I'm saying. They're sensitive uh, to the point to where if you mention them, or if like you even critique them, they will kind of uh, blacklist you. Well, the the reason the reason why I'm not I I feel free to indulge in criticism of them is because I see it as a done deal. You know, uh, Greg Johnson has already kind of has like banned me from countercurrents, and uh, and oh, okay. I know that I know the Matt Parrott and, and other people that I've feuded with for years. I wouldn't worry over, about Matt Parrott, but but he's over there at Imperium Press, and I'm not and and Joel Davis and 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 them. I'm never gonna never gonna get along with them. That's so unfortunate because they are the most receptive to your message because no, uh, they're you, you, well, they should be, but they're but they're not because but their audience would be their audience. What I mean is, like many cases, you have to like see what whose audience are receptive to it. And I think they would be. They're slightly higher brow, much more higher brow than my audience, much more definitely higher, you know, slightly higher brow than like Norvin's audience. But you have to like realize that a lot of getting your word out there, unfortunately, is it's kind of a popularity game. It's, and especially well, I expect, right, I expected because that fair, until fairly recently, I expected that to happen through Josh Meal was also over at Imperium Press. And, and then he made this stupid remark about how uh, he doesn't want to be engaged in um casual conversation and i see that dna nation's project is anything but casual it's it's well they see they perceive it, you as such well no i don't think he does i think Unfairly. that this, hold on let me, let me let me let me let me let me let me say this matt parrot and um and famster tyler hamilton are both christians and of a very bureaucratic personality yeah and and T tyler hamilton um, in particular, uh, so would um, is valued because of his intelligence and his erudition. Uh, yes. By by uh, Josh Neal. Yeah, he's one of the only. He's one of the only people I could say in these sectors get, that can solidly be called uh, intelligent and knowledgeable in like right. his particular subject. Because most people, like uh, I will go so far as to say, you know, even Keith Woods aren't intelligent. In so far that they know a lot about uh, philosophy or about particular um, sort of uh, political, you know, political uh, okay. theory. Okay, but just let me make this point that that Matt Parrott and Thamster are Christians, and they they use that Christianity as a, a bureaucratic um, sort of obstruction, and um, so to say that. To, you know, they would be looking for bureaucrats are looking ways to, for ways to, to keep to exclude you, to keep you to put you well, yeah. off. So they would say to someone well, like so Josh Neal, competition, your competition, yeah, and, limited, and competition, yeah, limited pool of people. Like that's that's the problem. You're a competition I, for well, a limited you know, pool of people. I'm not really in competition though for Christians. For people, you who might want not be. You might not be, but there is some overlap with your community. And okay, but I, I didn't quite finish my point. Go ahead. So. That's the kind of thing that they would say to, to Josh Neal, who's looking, who I think is looking to be, to maintain his sort of like professional circles. Um, you know, he wants to, to work with countercurrents and, and and the other people in the in the mainstream quote, dissident right, uh, which I've pretty much eviscerated in terms of where its its origins. But anyway, but I see uh, something. They're, they're, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost finished. Go ahead. Tyler, so Tyler Hamilton and Matt Parrott. It's the kind of thing that they would say. What do I say to this? The, Josh Neal says, what do I say to this guy, Daniels? Uh, he wants me to come onto his part. Oh, tell him that uh, you don't want to be a part of something casual. It's a typical uh, asshole kind of bureaucratic thing to say. And, and I, don't, I don't care. I don't need, I don't need Josh Neal. And, you know, I, I thought at one time he expressed interest in, you know, discussing the DNA Nation's project. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to. Um, give that a hearing. I hope that Red Ice will uh, give it a shot. And, and Norvin says that that uh, that you might. Uh, well, yeah, I will let, definitely. You, you might let me talk about it with you, and that would I be will good. Definitely, so. yes, I'll definitely do it. No doubt, I'll I'll listen to anybody. I have no 
pretensions about most people. I want to hear solutions to the current dilemma and the current like crisis that you know Europeans are undergoing. You know, and, and we could say well, let, well, yeah. Well, let me let me um, compare and contrast it to one other proposed solution. When when uh, James Bowery was talking with Kevin McDonald, you know they they were in despair. What we, what in the world can we do? Uh, everything's going to hell. This this war in Ukraine, our people are killing each other. Pa pa pa. He said, "Well," and and Bowery says, "Well, maybe maybe Putin will uh, nuke the uh, eastern eastern yeah. eastern cities of uh, America, and that will that will be good because then <laughs> you know the the the." the uh, the yeoman farmers of the the Midwest will be freed up to from the uh, the, the yoke of these uh, Yankee Easterners, or whatever. And it, you know, compare that, you know, hoping that the cities will be nuked to the idea of forming connections and, and unionization, so to speak, life. on the basis of genetics, so that we are incisively connecting with people with uh, white people who may even be in the cities. And and leaving out, you know, non-whites who are in the cities, and and by the same token, leaving out like say Section Eight people who are moved into white communities because we are incisively acting on the essence of our genetics, as you know, as per the old Orion thing, our race is our nation. I think that's a hell of a lot better idea than hoping that the cities will get nuked. Well, I share sympathies <laughs> with both sentiments. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I understand. I'm hoping that just, there can be a more peaceful solution. You're speaking, you're but speaking as a, as a younger tortured man. I understand you. I mean, I, I don't know about tortured, I, I, but uh, well, okay. you, 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 your genetics are tortured. Okay, yeah, I mean, even I don't if you are, even, even if you. <laughs> I I actually yeah. thrive in uh, degenerate uh, sort of uh, urban lands hellscapes better than other whites. Well, you, you you are um, you're of that hardy uh, kind of um, stock that that uh, that thrives in the the rough and tumble of America yeah, as as I, far as I can am. be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a bit more sensitive. A creature. I mean, unfortunately, but... that's the most that's most of the white people. They're going to survive. I mean. You know, I think there should be kind of a uh, a balance when it comes to the white population, but I'm afraid the more hardy, adapt uh, adaptable uh, white people are going to be the ones that survive. Norvin, are are you one of the hardy, uh, adaptable white people? I, I hope so. Uh, realistically, no. Unfortunately, no. Challenges. I will not survive the coming decline. So you're better off with me because I, I have more. I have compassion, whereas. Whereas Patrick is a cold steel rail. You said that. No, 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 no. I have compassion for other whites. Um, it's you have just compassion limited. for Norman? Yeah. Norman, yeah, even, yeah. Even, with, even with, you know, because if he has kids. Norman is you know, sympathetic. He, Norman is sympathetic. The, He's not going to have kids. The, but I mean. With a sperm that survives, well, it's, it's, probably, it's probably going to probably going to give his child a better heart than he has. Let's put it that way. Yeah, no, my mm, problem yeah. there is that said uh, that, uh, that's not going to get passed on. People with my condition have had kids and the kids have turned out fine. That's not an issue. No, what I mean is with my health challenges, I'm dependent on medication. And as America becomes increasingly third world, A, getting that medication would be a good problem. And B, the thing that I, scares me, because I've already had problems. Uh, I had a leg messed up from a, a non-white uh, person doing a catheter. Uh, as the oh, wow. <laughs> in the medical industry increases, um, yeah, I, I worry about that a bit myself because I, I have to take some medications too. So yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, and the doctors are going to become just fucking third world. <laughs> well, they're all sure. Indians now, aren't they? There's a lot of Hispanics and a lot of blacks being nurses in America. Yeah, yeah. That I, I my, when my father was in hospice at the end of his life, all, all these blacks surrounding him. I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is what increasingly you're going to be uh, plagued with. I don't want anybody changing my diapers, let alone. <laughs> they won't take my sperm in a sperm bank. A, I'm under six foot. I'm like five ten. Although I do have blue eyes and blonde. You got to be six hair. foot to, for them to take a sperm. Uh, women, uh, women really only pick sperm donors from uh, six foot guys. Oh my god! Yeah. 
that's one thing that used to freak me out when it, in the days of the um, classified ads, you know, single women seeking men. It all say like five eleven plus, and, and I'm five nine. So it's like, what the fuck? I'm tall. I'm uh -oh. taller than. You're I'm taller than ninety. I'm taller than ninety. Now, come on, five nine. It's the average height of man in the world. I'm taller than ninety percent of women. It is, but I mean, world. you're still considered a manly. I in America, yeah, and it and it really pissed me off. And How about over, out. overseas? What about in Europe? Do you have better chances? Yeah, there's. You know, when when the population is stable, the women are less uh, seeking of alpha males and and tall guys. They, they're still, you know, there's still that preference of taller men, but you'll see guys of average height and, and even like guys who are like kind of like not the greatest looking guy walking around okay. with some pretty, pretty hot chicks. How much money they got. Well, you, or just, you know, inside, inside track, because it's a matter of a stable population. Um, you know, they, like I said, they, they get disgusted by the alpha males fucking around. So they, they want some guy that they can, that's going to stand, stay with them. Uh, it all depends. It mainly depends on, on the borders. Yeah. I don't know, man. It seems like the Polish population might be. Uh, is it not alpha? Is it not alpha enough? Some of it is. Some of it's very alpha. Um, surprisingly so. Would you say it's more alpha than the Germanic stock post? -war no, team? I don't. I don't know. I really don't know. I, but I, I can say here that a lot. A lot of the guys are. Taller, stronger, a lot of a lot of things more than me. You think that's diet, or do you think they have like kind of a, a more masculine? No, it's culture? it's 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 ge it's genetics and it's selection. You know, like from all these brutal wars and everything. Some of the guys who survived. So you, you, you have the advert. You have the different. You have a different opinion than most people do. Most people think that the war has an adverse effect upon, let's say, the masculinity and selects for kind of selects for because the more masculine people go and engage in war and get wiped out. From the gene pool. Well, I'm, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think that that quite happened. I, I think that um, you know, it's it's created this scattered population where, like, like I said, that Bauer showed me the study where uh, that uh, polls have the, the highest IQ differential in the world. They're, you know, uh, per capita more geniuses and more retards than anybody. The, the middle range, <laughs> the, the, the middle range has sort of been. Uh, those are the people that are killed in the war, apparently. Um, anyway, well, how, do you, how do you feel about caste system? You don't like the caste system, do you? No. Why not? I because I'm, I'm um, I think I, I because I take a, a human ecological perspective, and I see, I think that everybody's um, niche capacities should be respected, and that that they should be looked upon as part and you don't of, feel the caste system does that like let's say respectively people are well it, it might but i don't like the way it, i don't like the way it reifies things because I, I i like to see things uh more fluidly in terms of um not only evolution over the long haul but maybe even to some extent over the lifespan that people being able to move into different positions as as they might um I, that's not to say that uh you know, I, I don't think that there's a, a reality to different abilities, of course, but I don't want to um, uh, try to fix people in, into a position uh, forever uh, like that. I have a more kind of like processual view of how um, niches and uh, human ecology works and should be looked upon. Well, in that regards, do you think that um, I mean, when you're devising like a new model, let's say for Europeans and the future of Europeans, do you think we should be we should be respective to uh, the past in terms of the caste system of our distant ancestors, or should we forge something new based upon maybe our recent experiment, recent experiences, and our sort of interactions with the society? Well, I think you already know my my answer to this from what I just said. I think that we should forge something new. I, okay. I think that, that uh, what grounds though? What grounds would you? I mean, I, I heard your grounds, but a lot of people would like criticize and say that maybe uh, forging something new is too much of an evolutionary evolutionary leap for 
uh, for Europeans. And well, no, well, well, no, it's more perennial. Well, I mean, if I'm not, it's not as if I'm trying to uh, just force and and uh, contrive different positions for people. If I'm encouraging people with uh, to develop their their abilities and to assume a position that that uh, that they're that is appropriate for them, so. It's the the main constraint that that would be at all con, contrived is is uh, borders and boundaries of our people. Um, the rest of it could can come about ra rather naturally. Okay, I see. Yeah, and I'm just trying to categorize. The, I'm just and the way to... the, the way those borders this is a very important point the way those borders and boundaries are going to come about is through this concept of, of unionization and because because the crux of the matter is so to speak citizenship not even physical boundaries but citizenship if you are a member of our union then you have certain uh, you know in, entitlements legitimacies obligations um and uh it, it, that that's and uh we are uh looking after uh, uh, union members and uh, you know people don't want to be a part of it they're, they're free to leave they're not they're not free to impose uh, aliens upon us okay um, and this would also be looking to maintain the distinct kinds I know I know that you are um, very proud and concerned for your uh, Bavarian kind and for your Welsh kind, and that's good. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, well, I'm a mayor, but, though, I mean, that's not a really a well, you, you, You've only got those two those two things. I, yeah. I have two things, too, and it can be complicated, but still, there are ways to, there are ways to categorize these things. I, and, and, I would prefer not to have a ever have an experiment as America has of combining oh, it's a, a terrible all, the different, all the different, like, European you know, kind of uh, genotypes. So, irres so irresponsible. It's so it's so irresponsible. I don't want to never I mean, have like a a kind of experiment as was uh, as America was. Some I think that's it's good. A, because, a mistake. So you can you can help with this. Is what we're trying to do is gain control. I also of think the British Isles was a mistake as well. Or human ecology. British, I think the British was. I think the British uh, was a mistake too. The kind of Anglo uh, American uh, whole thing was a big mistake. And it started in the British Isles with the combination <laughs> of this is, this uh, the is Germanic where you, you, and the Celtic race. You've got that pincher movement chip on your shoulder against Northern, I know. No, the, no, no. It's, it has it's, nothing it's, to do with that. It's the Welsh and the that. Germans ganging up on Northern. It's, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with you that. Hate I don't, Northern. To be quite honest with you, man, I don't see, like, on the. The eternal on, Anglo. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, the I'm eternal teasing Anglo. you. I'm teasing I, I get you. your shit post and I get it. Um, but no, I, I don't, um, even though I do think that Anglo culture is very stagnant and, uh, it's, it's a very kind of perverse type of culture, the way it's manifested itself in the new world and on the British Isles, I still think there should be specific distinctions and delineations between various different ethnotypes that are in, uh, the I agree. Continent. and I think this should be respect, respective. And, and cultural uh, differences. That's a central aspect of the DNA nations that those differences are, are respected and maintained. This is the way we, we can we can catalog and, and, and see to it that there are sufficient numbers and qualities of the different kinds, of the Welsh, of the English, of the Scotch, of the Southern Irish, of the Northern Irish, of um, and so is on. categorical imperative uh, fucking That's clear call. Off. It is. Uh, of course. Uh, to answer, uh, General what does she John call herself categorical, categorical imperative? What do they call herself? She, she's, looking, she's looking ways to fool... Norvin was wondering why I talked to her. She's always looking ways to, to fool her way onto my streams. Okay. To hitch, hitch uh, so she's her. just like getting like a generic her, uh, philosophical concepts so she can... Yeah, you know, and, she, and she, can, she, she tries to promote herself. Where, okay. Where, where, where. Well, she's smart. she's smart in that way. Can't fault her on that. Maybe. Okay, so to uh, Gentle Giant, um, he asked you, Pat, if you support the caste system. I do support a caste system, Pat. I think you said you did. Uh, to categorical imperative. On certain grounds. 
on certain grounds as long as it, it's not respective to just materialism, you know, and, and like uh, the way that society is structured in the modern format of like ang the Anglo-American establishment, then yes. We, we don't go have back to the traditional, uh, and Yeah, but if we go back to traditional merits uh, of the caste system, I would support it. Not not in its current, uh, not in societies or civilizational current iteration. We don't have a caste system in our society. I understand that, but I'm saying if we, we'd we have to implement something to go back uh, right. to the way it was traditionally with Indo-Europeans and with European societies respective to people's abilities and also their, their various talents and traits and skill skill set. Hey, you guys, I need to give you a heads up. Um, and I, I regret this because um, I'd like to I'd like for this to be a long stream of itself, but I only have about 20 more minutes before my stream yard time would begin to run out. And I want to say if, if I save a little bit, then we can have a long stream. Yeah, we could, have, we, could have, we, could have, we could we could have a long stream next week and you know go on for however many hours we like okay. if I if I save just a little bit. So in about in about 20 minutes we gotta we have to end it and i'm sorry about that but, but we can have a long are stream you, next week by the way daniel are you familiar with like uh domazil georges domazil the french indo-europeanologist are you familiar with like his i think that I, I might have i might have seen the name mentioned at counter or something like that but i no, i'm not very familiar well he talks about the tripartite uh kind of caste system which is central to indo-european culture <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry for laughing, but you, that's fine. You, I mean, I, I look upon you just like. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Brutal, it's just a brutal, brutal Prussian mindset. Okay, I don't ever want to put people below me. <laughs> know your place. No, I mean, it doesn't have nothing to do with that. <laughs> oh yeah, the eternal, the eternal Slav, and uh, and uh, I don't know. The Mexicans <laughs> also had that same beliefs. I mean, so your Italian <laughs> side should be respective of that. Fascism. Oh, oh my God. It did, it did the, give the gladiators, the, the ear of Dionysus, where they kept the. Uh, yeah. They kept, they kept slaves, and the way, only way to get out was to become Sounds a gladiator awesome. and fight to death. <laughs> Sounds Wonderful. awesome. Sounds awesome. That sounds like an mm. awesome society. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you I mean, you can have his, you can have your much, state. Okay, you can, listen, you know, Bauer preferable. can have his state where he has pairwise duels. You it's can have your state. You, you can have your state where you have your cat system and gladiator fights. It's more. Um, I want to interfere. To the modern day suburbs, like it's uh, more preferable to like the sterile, stagnant culture of America. Like it, it um, is. It gives people you're liven an things expression. up with some gladiator fights. It gives okay. people an expression, and it gives people a reason for being as opposed to just stagnating and decaying away in like uh, the suburbs, like, uh, well, that's like some a, kind of lock box, like, like some kind of lock. If, box if you can, if you can get system. people to go, you can have a state and get people to go along with that. You a know? lot of people would yeah, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. I think, you think so? Yeah. They would. How about they, you? How about you, how about you, Norvin? You, you want to, uh... well, Nor Norvin would probably not be in the warrior cast. It'd be more into uh, I actually the don't common. agree with the tripartite cast. I think that I, I, uh, I think that actually the Germanic one laid out in Ridstool is probably closer to the original Indo-European one, uh, Jarls, Carls, and Thralls. But yeah, I would support a caste system. Norvin probably wouldn't be in the in the warrior cast. He'd be designated for in the Germanic the system. There wasn't a distinction. The Jarls included uh both warriors and priests those <laughs> in the cat spurred cast <laughs> those categories overlapped spurgian hierarchy oh <laughs> uh, why did uh why did she leave disappointing uh, just as well gentle well, giants like Daniel, is, Daniel is, needs to read if if you might, uh, that was Claire Claw too. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, goddamn. She's. Never I said she's it. desperate to hitch her wagon to the to the stream. <laughs> yeah. No, oh yeah, but the, very because, receptive to her stuff. Are well, they, like, what was I, talk, I was talking about Isabella in um, in the beginning of my commentary because 
I noted, I don't know if you heard me. Um, there's been a recent stream, uh, it's gonna be a um, video around showing how Columbus's mother was, was probably Jewish. And it's That's been uh, circulated in around a long time. Okay. Well, I just, I just found, I just, I just found it. But what was interesting to me about it is that it also corresponds with two of our pejorative theories about uh, kosher power and influence. Number one being that Abraham, Abrahamism. No, well, there's that but also, but, but, but furthermore, Abrahamism uh, corresponds with uh, genocidal imperialism of, of uh, you know, Columbus in the Caribbean, genociding the Caribbeans and forcing them to intermarry with Africans or, or his, his, his legacy. And how whites are blamed for that when it's just, this is actually an Abrahamic thing. Um, and also... Um, with horizontal transmission, because when Isabella made this edict that the Jews were either to convert to Christianity or leave or be killed, oh, you're talking about the Queen of uh, Spain. Spain. Yes, Isabella, and, and and she made this edict, and that's exactly when Columbus was apparently. One theory holds that he was motivated, you know, and the Inquisition was one of the. A prime examples of instigating horizontal transmission, chasing the, the okay. Jews over over a border, so that they it, it selects for the most virulent kinds who go over the border, and Columbus was looking for a new place, new host for Jews who are being ex uh, uh, expelled from Spain. Okay. So, and, and again, horizontal transmission is the theory going back to uh, Fawcett was the name of the guy. Of um, that begun when with uh, Babylonian captivity and snorkel blog was talking about even maybe Egyptian the the Egyptian uh, exodus. Mm, really, he, he, really interesting uh, how that you said that, that uh, you mentioned the snorkel, Egyptian snorkel exodus. blog. He uh, he, uh, he, that's an interesting story. Um, it is because of Manetho. I, I'm familiar with that one. Yeah, the story of the, the exodus. How they were lepers. They, they how they would have to put blood they would not have to put blood over the houses of the jews if the jews were not in fact living amidst the normal egyptians so they, so they weren't slaves they and then in fact as the story goes it reveals that the uh the jews were actually uh exploiting the native population uh, financially, as usual, and it's a, it's a it, find uh, look up snorkel blog on Odyssey. And, and he, okay, he, I'll look him up. He talks about it. it's really it's. Uh, Would he be willing to talk really, to people? Because I haven't heard a lot of that. I've had this snorkel blog here already, and and uh, okay. he was invited today. It, he'll, he should be back. Okay. Uh, him him and Per Norden, uh, another Swedish guy who's well apprised of the JQ, will be back. Um, and also, you know, uh, I don't like to talk much about the JQ anymore. And Muth Baron, well, it's just, it's not whatever. It's you don't have and to. If I do so, if I do so, it's it's going to be in a and like couched in like uh, spiritual and biblical terms. It's not well, you know, the, I, I made the point that's not necessarily safer in in, in the eyes of the kosher. It folks kind of people. is. It kind of is. Well, well in a way, in a way, eyes, not but, in a way, not because if you're talking about. For example, but I see other people. Other... Hold, on, let me, hold on, let me say this: if if a Christian comes and says, "Well, my religion says that we have to do X, Y, and Z," that can that can send red flags up for them. Couching it in anything. like biblical history and Near Eastern history. It depends on how you do it, uh, but anyway, it can be dangerous too, is what I'm saying. Anyway, dangerous in terms of the censors, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Because because they'll be triggered. Well, JQ is kind of boring now, and this kind of uh, topic. I don't. I don't think so. It, it, you know, if you if 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 it's the, you know your one trick pony, if that's all you talk about, yeah, it could be. But not when it's given Most its proper proper weight and time. Most people are one trick ponies, though. Maybe yeah. It. Maybe so, but not this platform, as you know. They don't come, take a multi-dimensional perspective on coming through the uh, Metro School. We we have you know a broad systemic look. Yeah, and I like that. To talk may, that that may be the, that may be the first place to stop. But even 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 you talk to people, these people, they're going to have to admit 
that it's at least as much of a problem our traders, so to speak, or or people who just don't care. This is it's a much a problem as them. So you have to you have to take at, first my, of all at least those my two things. Now, count. Daniel is looking at what led Europeans down the road of lacking kind of introspection and defense of their group, their particular group in response uh, to multicultural societies and also response to, you know, pressure and stimuli uh, that's been exerted upon them since the enlightenment. What shifted sort of the paradigm of like, of Europeans uh, to get, to get them in this current, this, this current predicament they're in. Okay. That's more of my focus on, on like uh, white people, because I think if you, what we, we, take, we, that, need, we need various fo focuses. In this, if you that, solve that, that I think you'll solve ultimately solve a response to the JQ, and you'll you'll ultimately be safeguarded against it. If we figure out that component, because ultimately we're just looking at kind of a reactionary stance uh, from you know from the Jew from the Jews being in in kind of America kind of in European society we're not looking kind of the Europe not only Europeans response to that uh, sort of influence but in ways in which uh, they have you know, not ways in which they prevented you're, you're, you this know, becoming a, this becoming a persisting problem well you have to, you have, you do have to I'm sure you would agree you do have to look at the, the influences that go into making up that psychology like for example christianity uh how it gets right into the head of than that is it deeper than that though is it is it a is i'm not i'm not saying it's not i'm, I'm saying that's just one one prime example because this yeah. this would be certainly uh when you have a text that says that even if you think of breaking one of the ten commandments you have as much as done it and if it adds that if you don't hold uh, the historical existence of Jesus uh, to be a reality and to hold him above your family, even that you can't come to the kingdom of heaven. This is, these are, these are, or then these are heavy duty psychological trips that, that have been laid on people who may have dire circumstance and, and will be desperate for some sort of confirmation in, in a moral order. And they've been offered yeah. nothing else. I agree. There needs to be definitely a substitution for, for sure. What is the current paradigm, and you may offer that, Daniel. I don't. I don't know. Or well, I mean, I mean I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm helping, and, and it might uh, be circumstantial to uh, to Europeans being uh, kind of thrust into a type of uh, predicament where they don't have any other choice. It could be that as well. Well, well the, con the 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 constant the the the. Um... What the concept of unionization will help once you start structuring uh, social accountability and, and uh, to our uh, to our, our people, our forebears and responsibility to our children. Well, that, I do agree with you about the current uh, what's, right. What's important? Or... What's 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 sacred will emerge. The reactionary sure. right is definitely not the solution. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're you're beginning to. Uh, Take up that kind of Metzger-like line. That, um, yeah, the reactionary right is not the very, very, fruit, very fruitful. The problem of like uh, Europeans and also this knee-jerk kind of reactionary thing, like to new solutions and to persisting problems uh, that may. And, and they want to go back to America. anachronistic traditions and, and all yeah. the stupid shit. Yeah, that might not be the way for uh, for Europeans. Although, although I do respect and like, uh, you know, the traditions. And the traditional some some traditions are worth keeping that's what that's what white postmodernity is supposed to do it's supposed to sort out the wheat from the chaff. some some traditions are conducive to maintaining our inherited forms and ways and, and some are not and some some modernistic advances are beneficial while others run roughshod and they're universalistic yeah. and experimental yeah. nonsense you've gotten better at this daniel You've gotten better explaining these points. Yeah, I have. I have. Um, with Everybody practice, used to stumble uh, all over the place. Yeah, I'm. You know, some, I'm taking uh, my my vitamins and not drinking as much. 
and also getting better practice. So, yeah. I, I am a, a little bit better. <laughs> Claire calls trying to get you on her stream. <laughs> She wants to be a star. She wants. She wants to. You know. Yeah, she wants to be an e celeb. That's that's her thing. Ignis, I'm not going to fight you tonight on the Apolloism thing, but next time I stream, remind you me. Should Adam, you should debate. You should debate him on the Killing that. Fields. Uh, that's a joke, isn't it? Fucking Richard Spencer. You debate him on on seriously on the Killing Fields about a pot. <laughs> yes, I actually want you to debate some Apollo Let's people. If anybody knows <laughs> the Apollo guys, I will it. fight you. Let's do you it. insult you insulted my Italian God, man. Let's do it, Ignis. Would you be down to like debate on the killing fields? Let's do it. Let's let's let's. let's I mean, do does he take the stance that like got something Jews against Apollo, man? Odin. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ignis versus Norvin on the killing fields. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's hype. Let's hype it. Let's get it going. He, apparently, he's uh he wants to do it. He's hyped. Okay, cool. Killing Fields. So uh, there we go. Uh, okay, so what what time um, next weekend? It can. I mean, it's a stream that can go on as long as necessary. But uh, is Saturday, Sunday better for you? I think Sundays are pretty good, right? Like this time next Sunday, nine. Like Saturday, uh, Sundays are cool for me at least. Sunday morning, um, say about. Ten o'clock Central, what about nine o'clock Central European time? Is is twelve o'clock California time? Uh, is that okay for you, Norvin? Next Sunday, Saturday night, Norvin. Uh yeah, that sounds good for me. Okay, and and it seems like it's okay f for uh, yeah, for it's Patrick. Fine. He's pretty sharp right now. It doesn't sound tired. Um, and then. And that should be good for snorkel blog. Even if I don't, even if I don't show up, I'm pretty sure Norvin will carry the stream. So. And then, and, and and if you can't make it next weekend, there'll be one soon after. So, and then we'll be able we'll be able to get this uh, DNA Nations project going because uh, you know it's not at odds with what anybody wants. I, I think that uh, we're, well, Orion is something that we can we can all get on board with. Um. And. Uh, yeah, like I was, I was like I was saying to, to Norvin last time I spoke with him. I, I even like uh, when Metzger used to say, "Your race is your religion." I thought that was a good one too. But anyway, maybe that's going. That was pretty standard. Time. That was pretty standard for the time, right? Yeah, and I, I, I thought it was good. But um, so I like Metzger. Say, he had his limitations, but I like him. Yeah, he had his limitations. He wasn't. Uh, he was self. He was. Um, hey, why is Claire referring to herself in third person? Because she's trying she to promote herself, that. she's ridiculous. The Claire call she, I don't, I, I don't agree with you that she's crazy, Dan, but, but, it, <laughs> but it, she's, she's mentally ridiculous. ill, Daniel. She's she's Dan, Daniel, why, why do you think people are not so receptive to her ideas? Like, like <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, she has. Claire I think call. she has, does have one adherent to secular coronism. She has one. <laughs> Like one dedicated, like one dedicated. For this Muslim, like this white Muslim lady from Southern California. Oh <laughs> man, really? <laughs> is she from? <laughs> is she from like San Francisco? No, Southern California. She's, oh, she's Southern not, California. She's, she's, is she know, a former uh, hippie? Like how old is she? No, she's she, she just she, she's distraught about the um. The, oh, she a Sufi? The what kind of Muslim are? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I talked to her very briefly once. And she was absurd. Well, on that note, uh, um, I, I'm surprised Claire Cole doesn't have her own uh, little kind of thing on Kiwi Farms. I'm really shocked she doesn't. Have well, that. I, you know, it's so it's so ridiculous that you have to wonder if maybe if it's just like um, she was told, you know, promote this and and troll uh, the WN sphere with this stuff because. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't make any sense otherwise. That she seems to me she was given this assignment to, to try to try to. Uh, By the way, this con ops frequent your stream as well. Not that I know of. Um, no, not okay. anymore. He used to always like. He used to always like uh, recommend you for like uh, <laughs> other people's streams. 
Nice to see him recommending you for other people's streams. Huh. Well, that's okay. I mean, Clara, Clara recommends me too, but I, I, I think it's, I, I don't know why they're doing that. It's sort of like indirect strategy to promote themselves. Anyway, so, um, like I said, I have to save a little bit of uh, StreamYard time so that so that we can have a right. stream next week. And I, I thank you uh, both very much for coming, Patrick and and uh, and Norvin. Uh, a pleasure. And uh, hopefully, talk to you next weekend, or or maybe even sooner. Yeah, yeah I'll talk to you next weekend. weekend. Uh, where is what's Claire Cause channel? I think it's uh, I don't. I, one's called Claire Call. One's called Hard Hard. <laughs> Hard yeah, we should go over there. Why? I don't want to go over there. Why do you want to go over there, Norvin? Well, you might as well just stream on your own. I don't want to give her any any kind of like shine. Honestly, I don't want to give her stream any kind of any any kind of credence. It really, um, it, it, yeah. It's I feel like I'm I feel like I'm vi validating like that stream if I make an appearance on there. It's like usually, and I, I don't I don't, I don't go there. I don't, if I don't like somebody, I'm I'm not I'm not signed. I'm not. I'm principled uh, on that. I'm not signed I'm up to her stream. I know you'll go on anybody's stream, <laughs> Norman, but I ain't gonna do that. I'm not going on Claire Call stream. Okay, so guys, thanks again, and thank um, you, Daniel. I appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks for next, thanks next for having me on, later. man. I appreciate it. No problem. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.